Hi folks, so today we're going to be looking at the Hive Active Heating System which I've just received. Now the, the kit that I've got uh, comes with the thermostat, the receiver and the hub. So that, that's what you need to be able to connect your heating system up to the internet to allow it to be controlled from your phone when you're in or out of the house. Um, you can get the smaller kits as well, but this one is the one that handles all of that. So it has the unit that you connect, that's the receiver. That's what you connect instead of your current heating programmer. You've got the thermostat which you put on your wall and the hub which connects to your internet connection and allows you to talk to it online. So let's have a look and see what we get inside this box. Open it up. So the first thing we've got is the Hive Active Thermostat. That's that box. Then we've got the Hive Dual Receiver. And then we've got the Hub. And interestingly, that's it. No instructions, nothing else in here. Now, I have gone for the self-install option. Uh, you can, of course, get these fitted by an expert, but there's very little to actually wire up to these. So I'll take you through the whole process and explain how you set them up. It's very straightforward. So let's have a look at what we get inside the boxes. We'll put the hub and the receiver to one side for now. And let's have a quick look at the thermostat and see what we've got inside. So we've got a user guide, installation guide. We've got... Four AA batteries supplied, that's useful. And we've got the thermostat itself, which I like the um, I like the look of this thermostat, it being shiny silver. Um, it's quite thick, it's, it's thicker than I thought. It's got a flat back plan panel on it, which the idea is that this gets fixed to your wall in the hallway or something like that. So on the top we have two press buttons. One is marked with a water symbol and one is marked with a heat symbol so that's obviously how you switch modes between heating and hot water on the display. Um, there we can see how the back panel simply unclips and reveals the four AA batteries. They're also what looks like a programming port or something inside here as well. I don't think there'll be any instructions on how to use that, that's probably just for factory. It's also got a MAC address on the back here as well. Now interestingly there doesn't look like there's any option for mains or transformer power on this, which is a little bit disappointing because in some cases I would have liked to have been able to power this from a wall adapter, but uh, not too bad. So. That's this piece. What we'll probably do is come to this piece last because this is the final part of the puzzle. So what we'll do is keep the installation out. But what we'll do is we'll have a look at the other components as well, I think. So the next one is the dual receiver. Now the dual receiver is the part that will control your heating boiler and your hot water. So. This here, it's a very simple programmer. We've got hot water and central heating switches on the front, indicator lights and a status light, and that's pretty much it. Now looking at the back of it, it looks like a standard type of fitting that are on the back of most of these programmers. So let's just unscrew this. It screws to the, screws to the wall, and then these screws attach the backing to it. So let's, uh, no, need to unscrew them a little bit more. Let's see if that's enough. There we go. So yes, you can see this is one of the standard back plates that you connect the mains connections into for the various functions. So uh, neutral, live, and then one, two, three, and four. We'll check out the instructions for that shortly. And what else have we got on the back of here? So we have 
what looks like an RJ11, a small connector port on here. Um, we've got a small wiring diagram explaining one, two, three, and four. And again, we've got a small programming port. Again, I don't think we're gonna need any of these extra features. From what I can tell, you just pair it up and off it goes. So we'll look into that one a little bit closer. What else have we got in the box here? Looks like there's a few bits underneath here. I've got a wall mounting bracket to fasten it on if we need that. So that's our, our that's our receiver. And finally, we'll have a look at the hub, which is the internet connection component. So we've got the, the hub itself. Uh, we've got an RJ45 network cable. We have a small five volt USB power supply and a power supply cable. So this one needs main supply and that's pretty much all there is to it. On the back here, there's power, looks like a reset or a pairing button and the network port. There is a cover, let's just have a look behind it. There is a little plastic cover blanking something out. Which if we have a look, it's a USB port. So we might need to have a little bit of reading and see whether that's usable for anything. But other than that, that's all we've got. So what I'll do is I'll take a look at the instructions, figure out what we need to do first and we'll work out how to get this thing up and working. All right, so here we have the hub. So the installation says to install the hub, then to install the controller to the heating, and then finally the thermostat. So what we need is this doesn't work with your wireless for your house, so what you have to do is connect it up using the Cat5 to your router, like this, and then the supplied power supply into it. So we'll plug that in and give it a few seconds and what it should do is it should sit there showing that it's ready and it's waiting to pair with the other devices in your kit. So once it's done that we can then move on to the next step which is pretty straightforward. And there we go it's waiting to pair now so let's move on and let's install the boiler part of things. So the next part of our install is to install the dual receiver. So this is where we've come to our boiler and this is our existing programmer. And the idea is that we're going to replace that programmer with the hive unit, which is going to control everything. So the first thing that you must remember is to isolate. Now on this one, it's nice and easy. Switch that off, the boiler display has gone off and the screen's gone off on our controller. Do not start or do any of this until that happens. If that doesn't happen it means that you're not isolated and there is mains at the back of here which is obviously very dangerous. So now that we know that that's off what we can do is we can remove the old programmer. Now all of these programmers come off in similar ways to how this fits. You can see there's two screws on the bottom when you undo those it allows you to open them. So underneath ours we should find two screws and we'll be able to unscrew them. I found the screw, the two screws at the back. Now the thing is, most of these are a standard size, so they tend to be the same width. So again, similar width to the programmer here. So if we look at it like that, we know that the screws will be approximately there and there. So I've now loosened both of those off, so we should be able to lift up like this and slide the programmer off. And now you can see we've exposed the main wiring. So we'll take a closer look at that. So now we've got that exposed, we can see the existing wiring. So you've got the neutral and live, and you've got four wires, which are normally two controlling the heating and two controlling the hot water. Now, if we compare this to the hive back plate, you'll see it's different, quite different. So in our case, what we're going to have to do is remove the existing back plate and fit the hive back plate. Now, if this is the same with you, what you need to do is you need to verify the wiring that is currently in place. So what we can do on this one, you can see we've got neutral live and we've got wires three, four, 
5 and 6. We need to look up the existing programmer diagram and ensure which two are for heating and which two are for hot water so we can ensure that it's wired up correctly with our Hive dual receiver. So I'll look those up and then we'll start to replace it. Well, luckily, in our case, on the back of our programmer is a wiring diagram that explains each of the wires. So looking at this, if the camera will focus, we have our neutral and live in, we have DHW off, HDG off, and then DHW on, HTG on and 5 and 6 are remote sensor. So first of all, remote sensor we don't we won't be using. That's for a thermostat that's in this house, so we'll just be removing those wires. And then if you look at the wires that we do have, we have one in 3 and one in 4. So in 3, DHW, which is hot water, and in 4, HTG, which is heating. So we now know that that is water and that is heating and it's the on trigger so we can match that up because in the instructions for our hive receiver we have this which is for the dual receiver and you can see there in position 3 is hot water on and 4 is heating on so that's what we need to match up so what we'll do is detach all of these remember which wires are connected to which take the panel off and swap it so we'll do that now Now this is where you could get easily confused because we've got two wires, both pretty identical. One is for heating and one is for hot water. So what Hive actually did is in the instructions, they did actually give you some little labels that you could stick on the wire so you knew which one was which. So what we'll do is we'll take them off and we'll stick those on so we can remember which one is heating and which one is hot water. Now we have all the wires disconnected, we can take the old plate off the wall. And fit the new plate. Careful if any of the stickers or, or markings you've got come off, it's quite common to happen. And hopefully, because it's a standard back box size, we can fit the new one over the top like this. So we'll screw that in and then we'll start to put the wires in. So I've gone ahead, attached the back plate and then wired each of the wires up. Again, follow the diagram for the dual channel receiver wiring. So we've got neutral live, skip the hot water off and heating off and then hot water on, heating on, and those are all wired up. Now the two wires that I did have which were extra, which were the old remote sensor, which was the room thermostat, I've taped up and just pushed into the back of the box. Don't cut them off or anything, you may need them for future. So now that's done, what we can do is we can take the box and we can attach that and then fasten the screws underneath it Keep it nice and secure. Now before switching the receiver on, let's go back to the hub and double check its state. Now as you can see, the green has stopped flashing, 
which means it's finished setting itself up and connecting to the internet. And now we have the amber light flashing, which is what we want. This is installation mode. So the hub is now trying to connect to the receiver and the thermostat, which means we can go back and we can turn the receiver on with the boiler and it should connect up. So now we're ready to connect it up. What we can do is we can turn on the receiver. That's the boiler turning on. And you can see the status light is now flashing. And that means it's connecting to the hub. And you can see we've also got these two buttons along the bottom which are to switch on and off heating and hot water. So what we can do is press central heating. You can see that goes green and in a few seconds I should see the boiler trigger and switch on. Just waiting for it to go through. And yes, the boiler is now showing C and is firing the burner up, which means that it's correctly coming on and turning central heating on. I can switch that back off again. And what it'll do is if after a minute, it will then turn the boiler back off again. So that looks like all the connections are working correctly. And you'll see that it's still flashing because it's still waiting for the thermostat to come online. That's the status. So we'll do the thermostat next. So this is the final part of our setup. Now before I put it on the wall, what I'm gonna do is connect it up and let it pair with the other devices. So the other devices are still flashing, showing they're in pairing mode. So what we'll do is put the batteries into the thermostat controller and we'll let it pair up. Now we can see it. So after a minute it's showing this, which is wanting to take us through the setup. Now looking at the other devices, they've both gone green, so it looks like all the pairing is completed. So it's now going to set up, let's set the schedules. So we press the dial to continue. That's gone to sleep because I haven't done anything. And we can go through the settings, so which is more important. We'll go for energy efficient. And here we have a default schedule for throughout the day. Now we like our house a little bit warmer than this, so we can press the dial to edit. And you can see we can cycle through the days. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose Monday to Friday first, then press the tick. And this is when we select the heating to come on and the temperature we would like it at. And then when to turn the heating off. And if we choose no, and then we can choose when we would like it to turn on again later in the day. And again, set our temperature. And there we have our, our schedule for Monday to Friday temperature settings. So we'll press the tick to confirm. And that's after we've done the initial. So now you can see after we've done the initial programming, We've just done the basic setup just to show you. So we can now see the unit is up and running. Now I like that we can set it up without having it connected to the internet. So although it's connected up through the hub, we haven't programmed any of it through the website, the internet or smartphone apps. So this shows that this unit is quite good if you don't have that connection.
and it is fairly intuitive on how to set it up as well. So we can go back into the settings and we can change temperature control, target settings, and we can do it all using the fairly straightforward buttons and settings on the front of the unit itself. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to finish setting up the program here. So you can see we go back into the programming. So we go into the heating setting, back into schedule, and we can edit the current. So now I did Monday to Friday. So I'll now go Saturday and press the dial to edit. And you see we can we can choose which schedule we want to edit. So by clicking on it, we set the start time for the schedule and the end time, sorry, temperature first, and then the end time for the schedule like this. And then we can choose the next timer block, set the time, again the temperature, and then the off time. And it's as simple as that. Then we can click the tick to finish that. And yes, I would like to copy Saturday to Sunday as well. And then again, the tick to confirm. So it's pretty intuitive on, uh, on how to set it up using the unit itself. So you can see what the actual temperature of the room is and what the target is at the moment. And it's all fairly self-explanatory on how it all works. So, so now we can set the Hive app up on our smartphone. So in this case, I've got an Android smartphone. I've installed the app. So if we load it up, and it should already be logged into my account. So we're at the setup. So what we do is we choose the Hive Hub and it goes through the setup, continue. And now we need the Hub ID, which is shown on the bottom of the Hub. So I'll just key this in. So I keyed the Hub ID in and it continued. And I've already put in my username and password. And there we go, we can see that the unit has picked up. So what we can do is we can see that the thermostat is connected and the receiver is connected. So we'll now continue. And you can see it's now showing information about our current setup, hot water is off, and our thermostat is showing 22.5 degrees. So if I click on it, and we can change the temperature setting just by scrolling backwards and forwards like this. We can press boost at the bottom if we want to, and we can tell the state of the heating. So you can also see the schedule is in place as well which you can go into and you can edit. So you might find this a little bit easier to use this to, to edit with rather than using the thermostat setting itself. You can see we've also got an actions. So we'll find out how we do this. So we can do a heating action. And you can see we've got lots and lots of different functions. So we can create a set of events that allow us to control when our heating or hot water would come on and off. And we can program them in using this simple setup. And it's the same with hot water. And we can see the current setting is scheduled to put the hot water on, but we can also force that to come on as well if we want. So there you see, we can choose a boost of an hour if we want to for hot water as well. And again, you can view the schedule 
and also go into the actions and create actions for these functions. So it's a, it's a pretty comprehensive app. You also get a similar thing on the website as well that you can do all of these functions too. So it allows you quite a lot of flexibility in being able to program and view all the different settings of your Hive setup. So now what we'll do is we'll run this as a family and see how we get on with it with our changing schedules and busy lifestyles and see what we think of it after a few days of it being in use and see what everybody thinks. Is it doing the job? Is it keeping the house warm? We'll also be able to take a look. I have a um, smart meter that gauges our gas usage for the house and it'll be interesting to compare the last few days gas with gas over in the next couple of days after installing the hive and uh, with the schedule that we've set up and see whether we do start to make a saving improvements whether the house feels warm or cold because as with most things it will take a little bit of settling and probably changing the the schedule that i've put in so we'll keep you updated and we'll see how we get on don't forget to put a comment on the video or give me a thumbs up if you liked it please do remember to subscribe and of course you can join me at patreon slash andyb2000 as well i'd love to see you becoming a patreon or if this has been of any use to you just tip me a coffee using one of the links shown on my youtube patreon or on my website so hope to see you soon